Northwest fishing fans, Hannah Pennybaker here. So it's opening day of trout fishing here in Washington State. It's the fourth Saturday in April, and you've got your limit of trout. Well, how do you go from this to this? Our resident trout expert, Chris Decker, is going to show you exactly how. This is Northwest fishing. Stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and get right to it. We're going to start filleting this trout that we caught today. We have already gutted at the lake, so we can leave all the guts for the crawfish and the ecosystem there. But my first cut that I always make is I go ahead and cut right behind the collar from here right on up as close to the head as I can get so it gets right in there and gets as much meat as you can get. And then the next cut that I like to make goes and you're just cutting through the skin from the top of the head all the way back to the tail so that it's a lot easier trying to go for the flesh because you don't end up slipping through the skin. And it's going to go right from the head all the way down the spine right to the back of the tail. And then I like to flip it over and do the same on the other side. Now that you've got both sides opened up, it's a lot easier to just take the ed the point of your knife and go ahead and cut about down to the ribs, but you don't want to cut through them. You know you're doing it right when you can hear the clicking of your knife against the bones, the pin bones. And then you have a nice deep cut there I'm going to go ahead and get right up here to the head. That fillet is now freed up. I like to just keep flipping to try to get as much meat off the bone as possible because it's a lot easier to fillet something when you have very repeatable steps. So it always feels the same, it always cuts the same. So by being able to flip it over, it always feels like there's another fillet on the other side instead of taking one fillet all the way off. Then you have one side where it's just laying really shallow on the table and it no longer feels like there's another fillet on the other side. So you just lose the feel. So you have to, in essence, learn how to cut two different fillets. One with the spine against the table and one with the other side of having the fillet on it still. Now you've got both fillets freed up to the spine. And after that, you're going to want to go ahead and what I try to do is I take and I, when I gut my fish, I cut from the, the anal gland up to the throat and I try to get my knife to poke out right about where that first cut starts right at the anal gland and it, it'll just poke right out in the cavity here like that and then it's gonna go ahead and just it's just hold the and get the belly of your knife to get a little bit of flex so it, you don't miss any of the meat on the bottom and then you just go ahead and cl go clean on through right to the tail and then I flip it over and do the same on this side and now all you have left is to free the meat up from the ribs and it you just kind of go slow the closer and tighter you can get to the ribs the more meat you leave on and the less bones you have to pick out later And there's 
one fillet and you just flip it over and all you have to do is free the ribs up off of this side. And now you got two clean fillets and a nice carcass to give to your neighbor who makes nice fish soup. In regards to what kind of a fillet knife you're going to want for trout is, I would say really anything will work, but you're not going to want anything that's going to be too firm or too flexible. You want it to have just a nice little amount of bend to it so you can get the belly of the knife to bend a little bit when you apply pressure, but you're not going to want it to, you know, snap like a butter knife or something. Um, but as long as you can keep it nice and sharp, it's really just going to keep cutting well for you. And I always like to use my work sharp here. It, it keeps almost any of my knives as sharp as possible at all times. I use this one at home because I can keep things really sharp and bring them out into the field or to the river, the lake, onto the boat. Pretty much everywhere I go, bring knives. But this keeps them sharp. And even if there's like a crack in the blade, a chip or a nick, this thing will take it right out. It's basically a little belt sander that's made for working on knives. It's really easy, very simple, hard to get wrong. And it creates a really nice bevel or like a rounded bevel so it keeps a lot more meat on your blade so it lasts a lot longer and stays sharp longer.